Okay, so on your project setup, you need to keep in mind the the different kind of financing options that you have available because the entire the whole idea of this feasibility application is so that you can finance a loan and then refinance it and then convert it into a construction fi finance and if there is a mezzanine finance and if there is a if there is an interest on the developer's loan as well so let's just focus on these five options land finance and um, land loan refinance construction finance mezzanine finance and developers loan so let's just zoom right in and only focus on these few things um okay so let's let's look at the first thing uh which is the land finance so you'll see one two three four and five these are your financing options now they have to kick in at, at a time when you first settle on a block of land. So, so to speak, so we've got, let's say, land finance starting at one. So what we need to do is select the value that we're gonna buy the land for, let's say 1.2 mil, um, and we put that in. And when we settle on the block of land, which is a retail loan, now, if you don't know how development finance actually works, uh, I highly recommend that you get the um, uh, property development system full course so that you can understand how everything comes together and how everything works. And because that's not in scope for uh, for this feasibility application, I assume that you already know uh, these things. So in, you, in that you put in your loan duration. So let's say you will be holding the land for six months and whatever the interest rate is going to be at that stage. Uh, you can put in 5% or leave it at 5%, whatever that is going to be. And you need to figure out the loan start date or the date you're going to settle on the land. That is the date when if you bought the land for 1.2 mil and the bank said that we will uh, fund 70% of it, that means that, you know, 840,000 is coming from, um, uh, from the bank and the remaining of the money is actually coming from your pocket. What is that date when that loan is going to kick in? So you have to click on this and select the date when you're going to settle on the, your first loan, which is your retail loan. So let's say we started this on the 3rd of February 20 and we know that the, this will the um, our settlement is going to occur in the month of May. Now, you don't have to. Uh, select the exact date on that thing but what you need to do is select that month because everything is uh, when it comes to a development feasibility it's all done on a month-to-month -month basis it's not done from the exact date and everything because what we are trying to do is figure out a cash flow for that month um, so if you select the date uh, 1st of May or 1st of June or whenever that settlement is going to incur uh, occur then that's the date that we select so um, loan paid our date automatically will be six months after that and we'll show that in a second but let's look at this are you going to refinance that land loan now this is going from a retail investment loan to another investment loan but with a different lender if you are going to do that you need to select this as yes you need to know what that refinancing loan, um, uh, we're refinancing the amount that, that is going to be. So if it's going to be the full amount, let's say one, two, one, two, three, four, um, whoops, one extra zero. So let's say it's gonna be 1.2 mil again, and then you'll be holding it for another three months because this is like a interim loan and you know the first lender asks you to, um, uh, to basically, you know, um, that, that loan was only for a short amount of time. Uh, you select that and you click on save and refresh. So this is then going to do your calculations for when the other loan is going to start because that can only start after the first six months when this loan is paid out. And the loan repaid period for the next loan is going to be based calculated based on the amount. Uh, the, the duration of the second refinance loan and so on. So um, if this is not applicable to you, you leave that as no, because you're not going to refinance, but there will definitely be a period when you've settled on the block of land to the time when you are ready to start construction. So during that time, it's a different set of loan. It always is. 
And um, during construction finance, it's a different set of loan. It could be with the same lender, it does not matter. But the first leg of that loan will always be a retail loan or an investment property loan because the property at the, at the moment hasn't got anything on it. Uh, it might even have a permit, but you are first just buying a block of land with a, a single house on it, for example, and then waiting for that time so this is to be able to calculate that portion of interest so if i make that as zero i still need to change that i still need to click on save and refresh so that i am on that page and you know it will it won't calculate any more dates after that so let's look at the construction the so the second the third in line is your construction finance so you know that your lender will lend you money based on a loan to value ratio, LVR or LTV, it's the same thing. So if you can borrow 65% of the total development cost, you put that in there and you know that the construction loan would be around 6% and your construction will take, you know, 12 months for the build contract. Let's say the, the construction contract will be for 12 months. Uh, and during the 12 months, the builder has to deliver the construction to you. And then this is going to be your settlement buffer, which is another three months on top of that after you finish your construction to close all the sales that you have made, to settle all the sales that, that you have made. So once you make those changes, click on save and refresh, and this will run and recalculate all your dates based on that so in this scenario it wasn't because when we selected no it recalculated all dates for you anyway now is there going to be another set of mezzanine financing happening now mezzanine finance is not that it's going to take um take away the first loan but it is it is like a loan under the main construction loan so let's say that 35 percent that you have to come up with from your own pocket it could be uh, it could be another loan that you you would you would want to put that in, but all you need to have uh, need to know is the loan amount there. If you're not using that, leave that as no. It's not required anywhere. But we'll show you examples of how you use it and how you can leave it as no and, and it's not required. Uh, because all we do is capture the interest in the from the mezzanine finance and add it to the total interest costs for the project. And then we've got developer's loan. That is the amount of equity that you're coming up from your own pocket. Are you going to charge interest for that equity for the project? So that is where um, the developer's loan comes in. So you've got your loan amount and you can put in the amount that you're gonna borrow out. You don't have to know all these things up front. Let's say you do the feasibility and come towards the end and then you decide, okay, I want to you know charge um, uh, X amount of interest on the money that I'm putting into that's the project because the project is done in a separate entity and you're a separate entity so so you can do that um, inject equity when required or yes or no this is basically whenever the money is required that's when the equities is coming in um, and we'll explain that when we get to the developers loan section but at this stage this is all done and I can click on save and refresh and that's that's basically uh, it and we look at property stats in the next video